I'm Maureen O'Hara Ewer, and I've shown at Phillips for quite a few years, and was definitely interested when they approached me about the show that was dealing with climate change. As a piece that I'm going to show you that has been seen at the Utah Museum of Fine Arts and at Phillips, the plight of the planet and climate and species within the planet has already, already been an ongoing interest in my work. In some cases, I've used that concern as a metaphor, a visual metaphor, for other things personally going on in my life. But it, So a piece might operate on two levels, at least two levels, as I'm working on it and in my mind. So this piece is actually entitled Endangered Species. It was a piece that where the, this face of it, we're going to see two faces to the painting and the construction, um, came up relatively quickly. I can even tell from the surfaces they've been less heavily worked than some of my paintings. And by relatively quickly, if we looked on the back of the painting where I make notes about when I started and when I finished a piece, I might have only worked on this off and on for nine months or a year. It's also a good example of not only subject matter that I'm interested in, but the way I work with the surface. And if a visitor to the gallery comes, he or she will see that I abrade the surfaces, I sand them, I put down wet washes, and then take off paint, but I'm constantly feeling free to manipulate a surface. In all the pieces we're going to see, we're going to look at four surfaces on three paintings. I keep them very, very flat so that I can always revise as I go along, that there's no mark that I'm left with that I can't change, which appeals to me. So this piece obviously is from a series of sea creatures, whale-like or whale-related sorts of images, and an animal in distress. The more surreal aspect is where the water is contained within the two trees, and so there's that little bit of discomfort of the way that a landscape, if you want to call it a landscape, has been treated. The other way in which this is typical of all the work that we'll see is the material is water-based. So there are coats of gesso that have been applied over time, then acrylic paint used very, very thin, pencils, inks, lots of sprays that fix the image on a surface. So that'll be true of all of these. So we're looking at the other face of endangered species. And when I was working on this piece, and Originally, there were two separate surfaces, but I became intrigued by the possibility that this would become an object, more of an object than one thinks of when a painting is hanging on a wall. And I liked the two-sidedness. The um, creature, again, is either the same as or related to the one on the other side. This surface, if you look at it closely, if you come to the show, has been more heavily worked, you know, probably off and on for I'm going to guess now without looking at my notes on the back, but maybe three years in the run-up to the faculty show. I'm always coming and putting media down and then washing media off and then deciding what with perhaps pencil I'm going to pull out. Things that happen with water that were sort of accidental, I can come into an area and exaggerate them with dry media like Prismacolor or things like that. Much of what you're looking at, though, is acrylic paint applied over a period of years in very thin washes. Working that way, I tend to work not only if, are the surfaces flat, but my technique is flat, that I'm working on a table or on the floor. And some of the more satisfying um, effects that I get with the stains are when I've been working, 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 and then it's time to go home and I just leave a stain on the masonite and go away and then come back the next day. And how it is dried is maybe more interesting than what I could have come up with if I had forced it and stayed and fiddled with it. Because I, given enough time, I can ruin almost any piece. I, when I talk to students about working with stains this way, I say it's, it's like that effect um, either in lithography of a reticulated wash or 
more commonly, if you spill coffee on the counter and then you come back, it is dried in a certain way where the margins might be darker than what's within. So that whole piece of, is intended to be either exist separately as wall pieces or most satisfyingly to me as one construction, the way it's displayed here. The title, Endangered Species, and even the way that I work with this theme and have worked with it for the past several years is in, in some ways a double entendre. It definitely is talking about the biological crisis. And as the gallery director, Mary, pointed out, people don't realize how many species we, we're losing every single day. We do pay more attention, certainly to large mammals like a whale um, or other compelling sea creatures. But as we've been talking today, who knows how many you know, insects that we don't care about have just vanished from the biosphere. As an artist, I'm operating on two levels. One, it's a, a form that delights me, and certainly when I've seen large sea creatures, um, a form that delights me in the wild. But it's also, as, as much as anything, it's a stand-in for all of us. So I'm using it as a visual metaphor, as myself, as human beings, and saying that we are endangered species. So um, this piece is titled High Water. I do know this, uh, one of the two more recent pieces in the show, that from my notes on the back, I first started working on the surface in 2010, and it's actually been in another form there were some fish down here, there was a boat, it was shown at Phillips and some other galleries as another painting. And so I brought it out and I was dissatisfied with the boat image and I spent, oh, six months trying to retain what I liked about the fish down in the water until I finally gave up most of them so that somebody looking at the painting might even, not even know there were fish. But for the last four or five months, I've been playing with these water shapes here one way which is typical of my work is the source is from some medieval bestiary, which I cannot even remember now what the form looked like, but I started drawing with this character using parts, um, say the slope of the back of the beast, and you know, a few months ago inserted that here, and then the water kept rising and threatening the beast. And I think it was around that time when I had already gotten close to the statement when I was approached by the gallery about the climate show. And I said, oh, absolutely, this is in my work already. The title came late in the day and is tying into the show, as in hell or high water. And just the threat to this character here, who is myself or is all of us, or is just a beast, with the threat of the rising seas. And again, it's that, but is my work political per se? No, as much as anything. It's a visual metaphor about my own personal situation and distress about that. This piece, uh, which is not one of my larger works, but is the largest of the works shown here in this show, is, as with all the other works we've seen today, is on panel with the same approach to media, water-based media, and then dry pencil. And the title is The News From Here. The elephant is either a metaphor for myself or just a wonderful creature. It's also one of the moments that appears in my work that's a tribute to India and the experience that I had traveling there and from an Indian miniature. This has been developed over the longest period of time. We look at all the work in the show. And again, you can see a heavily abraded surface where I put down media or image and then come in. At one point, I can tell with an electric sander and pull media off and then found other things. Fire is a metaphor here for climate change and global warming. And it also is something I've used ever since living through a fire when I was in graduate school as a visual metaphor for distress or trauma. The late Bob Kleinschmidt, my professor, 
I remember saying years after graduate school, when he went to a show of mine, he said, oh, I can always tell how crazy you're feeling by how much fire there is in your paintings. So we can expect in the current environment and what's going on right now, more fire, not less fire. But it also is something that is beautiful to me. So, you know, when I'm dealing with something that is a distressing topic, I'm still, as an artist, most motivated by finding beauty and satisfying form within that. So again, my primary motivation is aesthetic rather than political, even though as I'm reading the New York Times or operating as a citizen, I'm primarily political. But what I'm doing in the studio is primarily making art and the background noise is what's going on in the larger society, or in this case, the globe while I'm thinking about what's going on in my own head and my own life. What is something I hope people will come away from this show um, with? I don't know that I expect art to accomplish much besides the aesthetic exercise of making it and looking at it. I don't know how many people are going to walk into the gallery and be motivated to behave differently in their lives in ways in which we all are contributing to climate change. So were I the artist who wanted to do that, I think I'd make a documentary. But on the other hand, I think it's crucial that a gallery such as Phillips be part of the conversation. I, you know, I haven't had any experience of anybody going to a show, sitting in a show of mine, and then behaving differently politically or using less plastic or being nicer to their neighbor or, you know, whatever, you, you know, faith-promoting thing you might want art to accomplish. Do I think that static art, the kind of art that I make, is the best way to change society? Um, no, I certainly think film has been able to do that. And then, I think as a subtext, one has to be frank about the fact that I and most, if not all, of the artists in this room are using materials, um, one hopes, in a responsible way, but we are cutting down trees and using plastic materials and disposing of materials. So we are not other than society, even as we might have opinions about what our neighbor ought not to be doing. So we have a responsibility within the need to make art to be as responsible as we can about use of materials, but to know that we're complicit.